Today on Prophecy Focus, we will examine the prophecies regarding the new Jerusalem and the eternal comfort provided for God's people. Well, I'm Dr. Richard Schmidt, founder of Prophecy Focus Ministries and pastor at Union Grove Baptist Church in Union Grove, Wisconsin. And Josh, uh, it's great to have you here with us once again. I appreciate the uh, uh, the partnership that we've developed. We've become good friends, and uh, boy, I just appreciate all the input that you've been giving right here on Prophecy Focus. You know, Rich, when I think about this, this topic, I think about life now. Life gets hard. It's difficult. We struggle. Uh, but And things don't always go as we plan them to. So it's nice to be able to just pause and look through the lens of Scripture into the future, into the prophetic eternity that we have, and just rejoice in the splendor and the beauty that God has in store for us. Well, boy, that's a great point because, boy, when we look at what's taking place, not just around the world, but right here in our own country, we've been going through some devastating things. Just today, the interest rate, I mean, inflation's been out of control. Right. Goes up, I think, 0.75% uh, of a percentage point. The stock market has been going down, down, down. Right. People are, are working harder than they've ever worked to make the same amount of money. Uh, uh, folks aren't able to pay their gas bills. It's just been a devastating time uh, the last few years with the economy tanking, with COVID-19, with uh, so many people that have died, not just from the COVID issues, but so many other things. And Josh, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, it gets hard for us as, as sometimes. We're, we're just burdened with life and it gets tough. And God's prophetic word actually, it kind of helps us have a little bit of joy at it times. It does, it does, it's really a blessing. All right, and I know uh, one of the things that uh, you and actually part of your family's involved in is the counseling ministry. And uh, before we get into the actual prophetic scenario here, what are some of the things that uh, maybe you see or, or others that you, you've worked with see, things that are really during this troublesome times, how is that affecting people that you run into? It's affecting people in a major way. I mean, the, the issues with anxiety in our mm. culture today are just off the charts, just skyrocketing. Uh, the issues with uh, depression, uh, suicide rates are up. Mm. Things are happening with people emotionally and they're struggling. And really what I think it comes down to in, in many cases is a lack of hope. They're, mm. they're missing out on the hope that we have in Christ through his word and, and through the teaching of it. And it's, it's sad and it's a, it just kind of motivates me, I think, to be even more attentive. What are people looking for? They're looking mm -hmm. for hope and that hope is only found in Christ. All right, well, that, that's a great, great analysis, I think, of what I'm seeing as well as uh, we deal with people. Well, here's what we're going to do as we always do on Prophecy Focus, and that's we're going to peel God's prophetic word one passage at a time. So today's program will be a little bit different. We're going to look at the prophetic scenario, but we also want to spend maybe a little bit more time encouraging, helping, providing some wonderful biblical truths that as we await the time when we'll be with the Lord. Uh, it, it is tough down here sometimes. We go through a lot of very, very difficult things. Uh, we go through death, we go through sickness, we go through financial struggles, we go through family problems. All these different things are, Josh has, uh, and we're both in, uh, in ministry, both in the pastoral type ministries, and one I think the, of the main things that we do is not, to all, not just inform about the future, but we truly have a heart for people and want to help them. Yeah, well, we have the future to look forward to, but people have issues today, right now where they live, and it's so important that we meet them where they are and, and help bring them closer uh, to the cross, to Christ, and to the comfort that we find in Scripture. All right, so again, we're in our second segment, if you will now, of a six-part series on the new heaven, the new earth, and the new Jerusalem. So we're going to be looking at uh, specifically some of the things attached to the coming new Jerusalem where every one of God's people will dwell for eternity. So again, as we get into this particular segment, we're going to look at the new Jerusalem's eternal peace. Boy, that's, that's something I think every person is looking forward to. Amen. Getting away from the chaos and the corruption and all the horrible things that can take place down here on earth and finally be able to enjoy 
a peaceful existence for eternity Amen. with the Lord. Peace at last. There we go. All right. So what we're looking at then, again, in the 22 chapters of Revelation, we're looking at those final two chapters on prophecy focus uh, in this six-part series. And of course, we're in part two today. So all these things are what are going to be taking place in the future after the church age ends, after the seven-year tribulation period, after the 1,000-year millennium. So we don't know, uh, Josh, when the rapture is going to take place, but based on these uh, at least two other events that we know are going to take place, the soonest possible scenario for this earth to be destroyed and getting into the New Jerusalem, how long do you think minimum it would take? Well, Rich, we've got the seven-year tribulation period, and then we've got the literal 1,000-year reign of Christ. You put the two together, 1,007 mm. years minimum is, is the answer. Minimum, and, and basically the minimum is this. We don't know when the current age is going to end. Right. We don't know when Jesus is going to come in the clouds, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 54, and take us up to heaven. One generation of Christians will be raptured, caught up, snatched up into the heavens before that horrible seven-year tribulation spoken of Revelation chapter 4, verse 2, all the way through the end of chapter 19, all deals with, that's a lot of chapters right. that deal with that small seven-year period. And then the wonderful 1,000-year millennial reign of Christ right here on earth. And then we get into eternity future where we're going to be talking about the new heaven, the new earth, and the new Jerusalem. So Josh, we, uh, we covered this in our last broadcast, but let's just very quickly review the first couple of verses of Revelation, chapter 21 that is. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now if somebody happened to have missed our last program, and boy if they did, uh, I advise them to go to, are you ready, vcy.tv. So just in your browser, vcy.tv, and you can pick up last week's program that went through this in detail. And by the way, all of our other well over 100 programs that we've done are on vcy.tv as well. So I encourage people to go there if they've missed an episode in the past. But what we looked at last week is uh, this new Jerusalem got, that God has uh, prepared for his people comes out of heaven like a beautiful bride prepared for her husband. And Josh, I, I just thought that was a great picture of what's gonna happen in the future. It's amazing to think about if you put yourself in John's shoes, what must have this been like for him to see this city coming down out of, through the atmosphere, if you will, down and settling down on earth? It's amazing to think about. Absolutely. Well, why don't you take us to uh, uh, verse three and then uh, we'll be done with our review. And then we're gonna get into some really interesting things when we get to verse four. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Now, folks, think about this. Think about maybe, and last thing I want is for you to uh, uh, think about bad thoughts or depression or tough times that you might be in right now. I hope you're on the mountaintop right now. I hope that uh, life has been really good for you today and in the past. But many of you watching, let's just be honest, sometimes life just gets us down. It gets tough. The trials are there. I want us to just kind of, if you will, think into the future for a little bit, because this is what's coming for you. You say, man, I don't know how I'm going to get through tomorrow. Here's how you can get through tomorrow. Think about what God is preparing for you and the wonderful eternity we're going to have. And it motivates us, it encourages us to press on uh, for the mark of the high calling of God. So here it tells us, Revelation 21, 3, here comes that beautiful new Jerusalem prepared as a bride for a husband, and you're going to dwell there. And boy, we're going to get into what that looks like in a, in a next broadcast. The new Jerusalem is just a phenomenal, beautiful, wonderful place. It's truly amazing. It's coming, and we're going to talk about that. But today I want to encourage you. So let's go to chapter 21 of Revelation, verse 4. And Josh, this is probably one of the sweetest, most comforting verses in Scripture that reminds us about 
what's going to happen the moment that we wake up and there we are looking at Jesus and there we will be entering that beautiful new Jerusalem and this starts that beautiful scenario. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. All right, well, let's go through those one by one. Here are four key things that are going to happen, not today, unfortunately. God isn't going to come down here. Now, of course, there's certainly comfort and rejoicing that we can have in, in Christ today. And he can help us to overcome those things and give us his strength. By the way, another interesting thing in, in the scriptures is in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16, it tells us the moment that we trusted Jesus Christ our, as our personal Savior, for those of us that are Christians, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. Right. Now, Josh, when we think about that, it, it's almost mind-boggling to yeah. understand that the Holy Spirit literally dwells within a Christian. Right. It's, it's something that I've always struggled to wrap my mind around is, first of all, why would God want to indwell me? Mm. But the fact that he d is indeed inside me, he's inside me right now. So uh, how, do, how does all that work? He doesn't give us all the details, but mm. I know he's there and he is working with my conscience. He's helping me through my life. And I'm so thankful that he's there. Yeah, and, and uh, here's the tough part about that. So we'll go to the tough side, then the good side of what you just said. The tough side is what happens when you maybe you're doing something you wish you wouldn't be doing? Do you get a little knock on your heart, oh, so to speak? Definitely conviction. He starts speaking like, hey, Josh, you got you to gotta stop. You have to turn back toward me. He's definitely in there pricking that conscience and yep. helping me make a better decision. That's the part I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the part I do like, though, is when we're going through a tough time, yeah. he's also there to help comfort Amen. us. Amen. He is the comforter. All right. Well, let's go now point by point through what uh, uh, we're looking at in Revelation 21.4. So right in this passage, Josh, one of the wonderful, wonderful benefits when we get into eternity future, after we've gone through the tribulation, the millennium's done, the white throne judgments is done, and we're now entering into eternity, no more humanity. It's done. It's over. No more people are being born. And God says this, no more death. Wow. Yes, I don't know what comes wow. to mind for you, but when you think about there being no more death, do you have any thoughts that come to mind? Well, I'm just thinking we were just at a funeral just a couple weeks ago. Mm. No more funerals. Uh, no, no more sorrow. No more saying goodbye mm. or at least see you later to, to a loved one. Yeah. I mean, I just, it's, it's such a part of our life uh, that it's hard to imagine life without it, but it's just an amazing thing to think about. No more death. Yeah, and, that, and boy, and, and every one of you that, that's watching us today uh, have probably experienced the loss of a loved one or you've been to a funeral, and it's just, it's not a fun, pleasant time. Even if the person who passed away knew Christ as Savior, we rejoice that they're up in heaven, but boy, our hearts just hurt and they ache because you lost somebody that you care about and love. Well, let's take a couple of moments. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 2 and determine why did death even take place in the first place? And I, I mean, when we look at prophecy, it's great that death disappears, but folks are struggling with this today. Yeah. Why do we have death? So Josh, if you wouldn't mind, take us through Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. So, this is a very interesting statement that's made in Genesis 2. And I'm going to make every lady watching happy right now, and I'm going to make every man uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's take a look at that verse, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. God commanded Adam, not Eve. You say, well, how do you know he didn't command Eve? Because in verse 18, she hadn't been created yet. God says right. he's going to create her. So God talks to Adam, the first man, and says, listen, buddy, here's the way it's going to be. And the Lord lays down the law at this point, and he says, Adam, I'm going to give you a command, and you had better follow it, or there's going to be serious repercussions. 
Of every tree of the garden you can freely eat, but do not touch that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Adam, I want you to listen carefully here. If you eat of that tree, you will die. Now, folks, I want to make it very clear what the Scripture is stating here. God gave Adam a choice, and unfortunately it would affect every single person that's ever been born outside of Christ himself. The choice was, Adam, if you choose to eat this forbidden tree, you're going to die. In other words, Josh, if Adam would have had the wherewithal not to eat of this tree, he would have never died. That's right. That's he would have never suffered, suffered death, right? Yeah. And, and, and when you look at this, it's like, why do we die? Why do these bodies fall apart? Why do they get old? Why eventually do we have funerals? Folks, we go back 6,000 years ago when God commanded Adam, don't do this. He wasn't kidding. Now, Josh, when God gives a command and he's telling us something, I think he's very, very serious and he has very serious repercussions if we reject that. Well, he was very clear with Adam here. He didn't, he didn't mince any words with him. He laid it down very clearly. And it's interesting, use the word law. There's 613 Jewish laws. Adam only had one, mm. don't eat of that tree. Hey. And, he, and he, he couldn't find the wherewithal, as you said, to, uh, to keep that law. That's, that's a good point. Well, let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to tie into this. Again, why are we going here? Because in the prophetic future, Revelation tells us that God will be wiping away the tears, all the pain, all the suffering that we've gone through on this earth. And we've got to go all the way back to the beginning of time when Adam was created to understand why those tears even exist. Romans chapter 5, verse 12, I think, tells us exactly why. Therefore, just as through one man, speaking of Adam, sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. So, if I have this right, Adam sins by doing what? Disobeying the command that God gave to him. And now God is saying, listen, how come, how Romans 3.23 says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And some people say, well, I'm a pretty good person. I really don't think I'm that big of a sinner. Others say, yeah, I've sinned a ton. I get it. Well, folks, here's the issue. The worst person, the best person, doesn't even matter here. You know why you are a sinner? Because you were born with the sin nature. You say, what do you mean born with it? Right here in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, when Adam sinned, every single person who has a human father which means every single person since 6,000 years ago, except one person who did not have a human father, which was Jesus Christ. Every one of us inherited our sin nature from dad. It just happened. And that's why it's making it very clear here. Therefore, just as through one man, Adam, sin entered into the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, all women. Why? Because we all have a few a, a human father, and therefore we have, if you will, the sin nature. Which brings up one good point. Josh, glad you asked this. <laughs> Why was Jesus virgin born? Well, as you said, the sin nature passes down through the father. If Jesus would have had a human father, he would have inherited that sin nature. But because he was virgin born, by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, he did not inherit the sin nature. Therefore, he was sinless. He could be the sinless, spotless Lamb of God who died for us. All right, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 says that Jesus Christ was virgin born. You go into the Gospels and the angel speaks to Mary, uh, the one who would bear Jesus and said, you will, be, you will conceive. This virgin shall conceive. How? By the Holy Spirit. So Jesus had to be virgin born or else he wouldn't have been able to pay for the, the sin of mankind as you very well stated. Now let's think about that for a moment, folks. Because of sin, you suffer. Because of sin, you have tears. Because of sin, you die physically. And because of sin, if one doesn't come to Jesus Christ, they not only die physically, but spiritually, which is known as the second death. Josh, I think you're up to speed on this. Every one of us, 
we've kind of we come to resolution, if you will. We're going to die physically someday, barring an event called the rapture. Tell us a little bit about that. In Revelation 21, 8, it talks about the second death. Right. What is the second death? Well, basically, it is the final separation of man from God, where, where all those that have not put their faith in Christ are cast into the lake of fire. Hmm. And it's, a, it's in, a, in a sense, a spiritual death, yeah. but it really is an eternal separation. There's no more hope. There's no more uh, chance of salvation past that point. And that's a very, very sad thing. And we, we don't want anyone to go through that. We'll tell you how to avoid it in a few moments. All right, so we've said there's no more death. The next thing God says in Revelation 21, 4, that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, no more death and no sorrow. Josh, again, and I know you, you uh, uh, are, enjoy counseling folks, helping folks, getting them through tough times. How do we deal with sorrow now? And then how does God allow us to deal with it in the future? Well, we talked about death already and how that causes sorrow. But Rich, there's so many other things in life that cause sorrow besides death. Uh, broken relationships, health issues, financial needs, all kinds of other struggles uh, that we come across. And so as we're dealing with people that are struggling with sorrow, we can bring them to the Word of God, we can pray with them, we can help them along in those ways. Uh, but this sorrow is, is, there's a finality to this mm -hmm. promise of no more sorrow. Because someone can get counsel and get help for a while, and then they can struggle again. Yeah. And they come back and they, they need more help. Uh, at this point in, in the future, there will be no need for counseling, no need for help, because the sorrow will be literally gone. So in other words, you're out of a job. Yeah, and I, right, I'd be wonderful. glad to be, <laughs> for this reason. Folks, isn't that wonderful though? Listen, no more death, no more sorrow. And then what is usually the result of people that are in deep sorrow? Well, it's, the Bible says what? No more crying. Josh, I know in the counseling room or when I'm dealing with folks, maybe at a funeral, uh, or I go to their homes and there's just been a horrible thing, and the tears begin to flow, the emotions come out, and folks are, at many times, their, their heart is broke, uh, figuratively speaking, and they're in sorrow, they're crying, and they're, they're distraught at times. Isn't it wonderful that in the future, in the prophetic future, God says, that's all gone, it's gone. Yeah, and, and you know what, we've all been there. You and I have both come into seasons of sorrow in our life where we're the ones weeping. Yep. And, and along with those others. And what a, what a blessing to think of no more, no more weeping. I'll be happy that the only time, now occasionally I'll get emotional about something good. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. I'm praising the Lord, get it, listening to some good music, and um, I might have some what we'll call tears of joy that come. But boy, I do not like sorrowing and having the, the tears come because our heart's broken. Well, what's the next thing God promises for the future? What else is there coming in the prophetic future? The Bible says, there shall be no more what? No more pain. Folks, there's coming a day in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the entire chapter basically talks about this whole body being transformed. This corruptible body must put on incorruption. This mortal body must put on immortality. And the great thing, when you get down to the last few verses in 1 Corinthians 15, the Bible says, uh, we shall all Christian, all Christians shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, basically a millisecond, our bodies will be changed. All the pain that we've gone through, all the suffering we've gone through, all the corruption, if you will, of these old, old uh, sin-sick bodies, bam, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, all gone, no more pain. Amen. Now, Josh, I know we have uh, a lot of our, uh, dear senior saints that, that uh, watch our program and many others, of course, but uh, there's, there's a lot of folks, Josh, right now that are watching us, some that can't get out of bed, some that barely can uh, walk and move, and the pain is horrible. And quite frankly, there, many of them are begging for uh, the Lord to come and to take them home. Josh, in, how, do you, how do you deal with this now? No more pain. Is that something we can really look forward to? Well, if God said it, then, then it's true. And so we can look forward to, and if it's okay, I'd like to read a couple of the sure. lines of those verses out of 1 Corinthians 15. It says, death is swallowed up in victory. 
O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? In other words, mm. it, it's a rhetorical question. Uh, death has lost its sting and Hades has lost its victory. Death and hell are defeated and we are gonna live forever pain-free in comfort with the Lord. Well, those are great words, why? Because when we get to eternity future, what's the Bible tells us? It tells us this, the former things, all the things that we've been enduring here on the earth, they pass away, they're gone. What a wonderful, wonderful thought. Well, let's move on. So when we kind of summarize all these things and pull them together now, what are we looking at? We're looking at an eternal new heaven, an eternal new earth, an eternal new Jerusalem where all of God's people will spend eternity together. Josh, why don't we close out uh, at least this segment of our series on the new heavens, the new earth, and the new Jerusalem uh, with Revelation 21.5. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Why would he write them down? Do you ever try to remember something and two seconds later it's gone? I think every day, probably. <laughs> we all go through it. And uh, folks, uh, the older I get, maybe you experience the same thing. Things come and they go, and if you don't write them down or make a note, and God said, listen, I don't want people to miss what we're talking about here. I don't want them to miss about the blessings that are coming. John, write this down so that people can read it. And folks, we read it, we embrace it, and yeah. we love it. Well, let's look at one final verse, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul said, of whom I am chief. Listen, what is God saying here? Jesus Christ, God's son. Why did he come to this earth? He came to do what? To save sinners. What do you mean save sinners? What do they save from? They're saved from their sin safe from the penalty of sin, which is an eternity in the lake of fire, as Josh, as you stated a few minutes ago, the lake of fire, which indeed is the second death. Have you ever placed your faith and trust in Christ? I want to encourage you. I know Josh would too. Encourage you right now, right there where you are, would you just bow your head and say, oh God, would you please uh, uh, forgive me of my sins? I know I've done wrong and I'm receiving Jesus Christ as my savior. Well, I've trust you do that. Well, thanks for watching us once again on Prophecy Focus. <music>